Excellent. Right. Alex, do you want to start with your intro? Okay. Assalamu alaikum, everybody, and uh, well, welcome to CICC's uh, Revert Talk again. Um, uh, being hosted or hosted and held by Ustazda Sidra Naim, who is an Alima qualified from Al Huda International. She has studied the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in detail. In this series, she will be focusing on the meanings, explanations and ways of implementing Allah's attributes into our lives. The session will conclude with interactive questions and answers. Today, we will be continuing a focusing on two more of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes, As-Salam and Al-Mumin. Over to you, Sister Sidra. Jazakallah khair, everybody, for um, logging on. You are very special people because this lecture is not open to everybody. It's only open to reverts. And even that we only advertise within a specific group. So you're very lucky, actually, to be invited to this. In fact, Allah has chosen you to come to these lectures. That's how lucky you all are. So today's two names, we're going to start off with As-Salam. And that is actually a very, very important name because our religion is actually named after that name. Did you know Islam is an anagram of Salam? And it's As-Salam that we're going to focus on first. Okay, so who can tell me what they think? The attribute of Allah as salam means, what does it actually mean? Any ideas? Everybody should know this because it's the name of our religion. Peace. Peace. Yes, good. Well done. Peace. And who knows the other name, the other, the other meaning of this, the main one that we know of? And what means? No, we're looking only at as salam first. Peace and Good, that's the word I'm looking for, to submit, okay? So the only way to attain peace is by submitting to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, that is how we um, know this name, okay? Right, let us now share on the PowerPoints. Right, so the bestower of peace, the perfection, as embodiment and source of peace which points to three main meanings, okay? So remember that in every single name of Allah, there are three letters, the root words. So when jumbled up, they become different words. So the first meaning is to be peaceful, content, and tranquil. That's why I've got peaceful, content, and tranquil background today on my um, behind me. The second is to be free from imperfections. The third main meaning is to be safe, secure, and well. Okay. The root, which is seen la min, appears 140 times in the Quran in 16 derived forms. Examples of these forms are as salama, which is submit to Allah to attain peace, okay, which is Islam. Assalamu alaikum as well means the same, means peace be upon you. Salamun means peace. Salimin means sound. Al Islami is Islam and Al Muslimin, the Muslims, submit and attain peace by submitting to Allah. Okay? Islam is the one who is free from all imperfections and deficiencies because of the perfection of his being, of his attributes and his actions. He keeps his creation safe from any injustice on his part, the perfection and the giver of peace. So in the Quran, it is mentioned he is Allah, other than whom there is no deity, the sovereign, the pure, the giver of peace and security. Let's listen. That's in Surah هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام. So can you see in it actually are two of Allah's names. So Al Qudus we actually talked about last time, which means pure, and uh, As Salam, okay, uh, is the latest name. So this is why we're covering this one next. It's actually associated. They're all associated with each other. 
and come next in the hierarchy. So in the Quran, it says he is the one who is the source of all peace and safety. A salam is perfect and whole, and he is the only one who can bestow safety and security as well as inner peace. Okay, so I am now going to play a video for a summary on what a salam actually is. The word salam comes from these three root letters, sin, lam, mim. The word Muslim and the word Islam comes from these same letters. The word salam has many meanings. One meaning is to be free from any faults. Another meaning is to be safe. And another meaning is to have peace. Allah is Al Salam, who is free from any fault. He doesn't die. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't forget. He is perfect. He is the source of peace and safety. When we say Assalamu Alaikum to another Muslim, we are actually saying that May the tree of Allah Assalam be with you and may he protect you and give you peace and safety. Those that believe in Al Salam know that he does not have any imperfections. He can protect you and offer you inner peace. The Holy Quran tells us لَهُمْ دَارُ السَّلَامِ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ They will have a home of peace with their nurturer. This home of peace is called heaven, and those that go to heaven will have protection, safety and peace from Allah al Salam. Can anyone else offer you this peace and safety? No, of course not. In order for us to be with Allah who is al Salam. We should not disobey Allah and do bad things. In that way, we will have peace and security from Allah. We should also spread peace and security by feeding the poor and be in touch with our family. Allah is Al Salam, the one who has no faults and a source of peace and safety. Okay, so let us now move on to look at how what other ways we can actually follow this name salam okay so can anybody think of any ideas how can uh, we can we, greet, can we greet each other good oh, well please. done Priscilla. this is one way we can live up to that name by greeting each other assalamu alaikum okay anything else who else can we greet with salam think of our prayers yes we say to the angels Yes, and who else do we say salam to in our prayers? Allah. No, not to Allah. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Good, well done, Alex. That's the one I'm looking for. We say salam in every single prayer to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, don't we? When we do our darud, it's called at the end of our prayers. We don't say it to Allah because he is already a salam. Okay, so let's have a look at some more. So first of all, the main one we need to look at is how do we attain peace? We attain peace by completely submitting to Allah. Okay, and surrender to Islam so you can be secure. If you submit, which is Islam, you will get Allah salam, which is peace. Believing is to follow the guidance and do the actions, deeds for them. Therein is fruit and for them is whatever they request or wish for. And that is actually in the Quran. <laughs> Peace, a word from a Lord most mercy. Okay, so it's mentioned in the Quran about peace that uh, when you uh, worship Allah, then he gives you peace. Okay. Continually remind yourself of Darus Salaam, which is the um, gate that we enter through, the, the peace gate to get to Jannah, so that we can strive to do as many good deeds as possible, which was actually mentioned in the video as well. And then uh, we will receive, if we are good, we will receive the Salaam of Allah and be safe and secure in paradise. This is how all these little words are all linked. Okay. 
Um, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us to make the following dua after completing each obligatory prayer. Okay, so here it is. Allahumma anta salamu wa minka salamu tabaraktu ya dhul jalali wal ikram. Oh Allah, you are a salam and from you is all peace. Blessed are you, O possessor of majesty and honor. That's in Sahih Muslim. And straight after prayer, you amazingly ask protection and safety from the mistakes committed during the salah. Oh Allah, as salam, we know that all peace and safety comes from you alone. Keep us safe in this world and the next. Guide us to patience and inner peace and make us of those from whom others are safe and make us safe from the injustice of others. Adorn us with sound hearts and make us of those who receive your salam in paradise. So there is another dua for you. So when we are anxious, when we are fearful, when we worry about something, then we need to call upon Allah, as-salam, use his name as-salam, because that will give us peace and security and tranquility and protection against all of those bad things. Okay, let's listen to the ayah. ما أصاب من مصيبة إلا بإذن الله ومن يؤمن بالله يهد قلبه والله بكل شيء عليم. No disaster strikes except by permission of Allah and whoever believes in Allah, he will guide his heart. Okay, that's chapter 64 verse 11. Also, the other thing that we need to do in our lifetime is be patient in trials, show patience and perseverance in hard times, and as-salam will give you peace inside your heart. Your heart will have salam, peace, a feeling of well-being, serenity and peace. And also ask as-salam whenever we are worried, supplicate to Allah. You can say, Allahumma anta salam oh Allah, you are as-salam, save me from this, or ask for the safety of others. Ask Islam to make Islam your safe harbor and to bring peace to your heart. Which famous ayah in the Quran says that truly in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find rest? Yes. Anybody know that one? Which surah that is in? Okay, let's put it up. Surah Raad. Okay, that is a very, very famous uh, ayah in the Quran to do with only in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find peace. Okay, so it actually tells you that our hearts will find peace in the remembrance of Allah. And we feel peaceful when we pray. How many times is it that we're crying or we're in trouble and we pray and then afterwards we, we, we rest assured basically, don't we? Okay, and praying also cleanses our heart makes it clean and pure, Al-Qudus, if you like, which was the previous name we looked at. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Verily, Allah does not look to your faces and your wealth, but he looks to your hearts and to your deeds. So strive for a clean heart. Just like you're alert for physical diseases, that constantly assess your heart for other diseases. Okay? And some of the diseases of the heart... Um, are lying, backbiting, swearing, hypocrisy, jealousy, showing off. So seek a cure for them in the Quran and Sunnah. Uh, and uh, make your um, your heart al-Qudus with Kalbun salim, a sound heart, a peaceful heart. So one of the other things is that we need to also give up any backbiting or gossip in this world because that will cleanse our heart when we do that. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu jitanibu kathiran min al-dhan inna ba'da al-dhan ithm wa la tajassasu wa la yagtab ba'dukum ba'da ayuhibbu ahadukum an yakula lahma akhihi maytan fakarihtumu Allah, 
says that, O oh, you who believe, avoid negative assumptions, avoid suspicion, avoid spying, backbiting, because it's like, you know, uh, eating the flesh of thy brother, and you would not like that. So it tells you clearly in Surah Hujrat. So one way that we can cleanse our heart is actually um, not uh, backbiting and gossiping and all of that, okay? And all of that cleansing of our heart and praying to Allah to make our hearts clean, make ourselves peaceful, then leads us to go to Jannah. And it actually, when the descriptions of Jannah are explained in the Quran, it mentions the word salam, salam. Here it is. Where they shall hear neither harmful speech nor falsehood, but only the saying of salam, salam. In Surah there you go. Okay. One of them, um, somebody has mentioned already, is to say salam onto Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We say that already in our prayers. Um, we are, do not actually say salam to Allah. Because he himself is a salam. Okay. So this is why he has told us to say salam to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. We already mentioned, I think Fasila mentioned very nicely that we say salam to each other. This is how we can live by his name. Okay. So there we go. One of the best actions, feeding the hungry and saying salam to those you know and those you don't know. Bukhari Muslim. And he said, when two Muslims meet, give salam and shake hands. They are forgiven their sins before they part. That's Abu Dawu. Okay? Spread salam by saying salam. Okay? So the salam is a pure blessing to us from a salam. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, O oh, people, spread salam, feed the hungry, be in touch with your kin, and pray while people are asleep. You shall enter paradise peacefully. That's the end of it. So there you go. We clean our hearts. And it causes peace in our lives when we pray. And we cleanse ourselves by giving uh, charity and feeding the hungry and all those good things. Bundle off everything. Okay? Right. Um, and do not wrong your own self. If you want the salam, the security and protection of Islam, do not wrong yourself, do not wrong others, and do not do wrong in your relationship with Allah as well, which means he cannot be unjust. You wrong yourself by sinning and not fulfilling the rights of others, such as obedience to parents, protecting someone else's honour and helping the need. So these are all the good things. Right, we're halfway through. Let's now move on to al mumin Who can tell me what they think that word means? And again, it means a lot of things. But who knows any meanings of the word mumin, which is another attribute of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any ideas? Is it um, a believer? Is it Mu'amin? Mo yes, it is. Good. A mu'min is a believer. Somebody who believes in Allah and does everything that Allah wants us to do and believes in all the prophets and everything that they've told us as well. Yes. And that comes up a lot in the Quran. Okay. Right. I think I'm quite happy with that answer. So let us move on and have a look. Okay. So Allah calls himself Al-Mumin, the giver of tranquility, the source of faith, the infuser of faith, the bestower of faith and security, the faithful, the one who gives iman and security. Okay, all of those words. Al-Mumin is the one who affirms and believes iman. See, iman is actually a, an anagram of Mumin. His oneness and the one who gives iman. It is also the one who gives security, Aman, and peace, and the one who removes the fear, and the one who is faithful. His promises are always true. Mumin comes from the root Hamza Mim Nun, which points to four main meanings. The first is secure, safe, and free from fear. The second is quiet and tranquil. The third is grant protection and to safeguard. The fourth is to be trustworthy. And the fifth is to believe in. That's the one that everybody knows the most. Al-Mumin is the remover of fear, the giver of tranquility, 
the source of demand. This root, did you know, appears 879 times in the Quran in 17 derived forms. Examples of these forms are Amintum, which is do you feel secure? Amanu, which means believed. Alimanati, the trusts. Aminun, trustworthy. Alimani, the faith. Al Muhmenina, the believers. Linguistically, Mumin points out the three concepts. One is Iman, which is to affirm something. Al Mumin is the one who affirms and believes his oneness. The other concept is that of Iman, which means security, safety, freedom from fear. The word Imana, translated as a trust, comes from the same root. Al Mumin is the one who affirms and believes his oneness. He is the one who gives security and removes the opposite, which is fear, and is the best keeper of imana, amana, the one who is most faithful. Who receives the imana of Allah, the one who has iman? Okay, so how linked is everything? Believe in Allah, and who act accordingly are the ones who will receive Allah's um, iman, security in this world and the hereafter. In this world, they will experience a sense of serenity and peace of heart during hardship, as well as during the terror of the last day. Those who are steadfast, the karma, will have iman in this world, at death, in the grave, and on the day of judgment. al mumin says, indeed, those who say our Lord is Allah, and then they remain firm upon the statement on them, the angels would descend saying, fear not, nor grieve, but receive the glad tidings of paradise which you have been promised. Okay? So, he is the one who bestows the gifts of peace, security, and faith. al mumin. So let's look at the ayah. هُوَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ الْمَلِكُ الْقُدُّوسُ السَّلَامُ الْمُؤْمِنُ الْمُؤْمِنُ so again, it's the same sentence where Allah is referring to himself as the pure As-Salam and al mumin So here are the two words linked. He is Allah other than whom there is no deity, the sovereign, the pure, the perfection, the bestower of Surah Hajj. Okay. So again, they come together. Okay. Al-Mumin, the guardian of faith, he who places faith in the heart of his servants, protects those who seek refuge in him. Let us now look at the video which gives a summary. The word Mu'min comes from the root word a ma na and its main meaning is to feel safe and secure. Like in this verse, wa-a-manahum min khawf, and made them safe and secure from fear. Allah is Al Mu'min, the one who gives safety and security. So, who does Allah Al Mu'min give safety and security to? Did you know that if someone truly believes in Allah, the messengers of Allah in the afterlife and does good deeds, is also called a Mu'min? These people will be safe and secure in this life and in the next world, and there is no need to fear or worry. Remember, Allah is Al Mu'min, the one that gives safety and security. How can we become better Mu'mins? We should gain as much knowledge about Allah. The more we understand Allah and His names, the stronger our belief. We should gain knowledge from stories of the prophets and Imams so that we understand how they lived their lives, because they are the ones that know Allah more. We should also do good deeds and keep away from bad deeds as well. In that sense, we will be called true mu'mins. In that way, al-mu'min will keep us safe and secure in this life and in the hereafter. Okay, how can we live by the name al-mu'min? How can we implement that name into our own lives? Any ideas before we go through the answers? Daily prayers on time. Good believing in Allah. By be believing in Allah and everything that is told us, we become believers, al mumin don't we? And then he infuses the belief in us, doesn't he? 
Okay, it's like when you harden your heart by not uh, believing in Allah and not doing everything that He wants, and then we open out our uh, hands and we receive those blessings, don't we? He infuses His faith into us when we seek His faith. Have you ever heard of that thing about you know? Uh, uh, you put one hand forward and Allah puts a hundred hands forward. Okay, good. Any more? you are learning more about our religion. Yes, learning more about our religion, which she mentioned as well in there, didn't she, the girl? Um, the more we learn, the more we are going to implement the religion into our lives and the more infusion, if you like, of belief Allah's going to put in us. We will get stronger and stronger and stronger. Okay. Right. Let us now have a look. So the first one is uh, prophet stories. They had trust. So one of the words they said was trust, wasn't it? So when you're scared, you put trust in Allah. And we look at the prophet stories. Okay. So the fire didn't burn Ibrahim. He had his trust in Allah. Okay. The knife didn't kill Ismail. The sea didn't drown Musa. The whale didn't eat Eunice. Be with Allah and Allah will protect you. Okay. There's another one where Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, was in the cave when he was doing the hijra and they were hiding in the cave with Abu Bakr. And uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, said this. Be not afraid, surely Allah is with us, he said to Abu Bakr. That's actually in the Quran, you know, Surah Tawbah. A lot of people don't realize the exact sentence is in the Quran. So when you believe in Allah, then he will keep us safe and he will keep us secure. Turn to Al Mumin for safety and and Refer to his name as Al Mumin. When your man is low, ask him to strengthen it with faith. Then you will not be scared. And the only thing that can protect us, we know, is Allah. Okay? Ask Al Mumin for Iman in difficult situations. Al Mumin is the only source of Iman. So ask him only to grant you safety, as no matter how hard the situation is, have Iman. And ask Al Mumin and he, uh, to give you peace and security, Iman, in your heart. Okay. Um, and here are some other ways that you can live by His name. Believe in Allah and His messengers. I think somebody mentioned that already very nicely on here. Have Iman, which is your belief in Allah, combined with action in following His commands and staying away from His prohibitions. And you will receive his iman security in this world and the next. Let's now listen to a chronic ayah. So Aminun is that root word again there. Okay. Whoever comes with a good deed will be rewarded with what is better and they will be secure from the horror on that day. There you go, secure. Okay, so read the Quran often, give sadaqah and focus on your prayers. So al Mumin will give you safety on the day of judgment. Ask Allah for guidance. For example, you can do istikhara salah. Iman is hope, put your trust in Allah. And he will then infuse his faith in us. Okay. The other one is to believe in the promises of Al Mumin because they will come true. For example, his promise is, you know, that uh, the believers, if they don't do shirk, will go to Jannah. Okay. And there's so many other uh, promises in the Quran. Another one is if you give sadhga, it will not decrease your wealth. So trust in this fact and fulfill your promises to your best ability. There you go, Amenin. There's the root word again. The righteous will say, praise be to Allah who is fulfilled 
his promise to us and made us inherit the everlasting land to settle in paradise wherever we please. How excellent is the reward of those who work righteousness. That's in the Quran chapter 39 verse 70. Okay. Um, the other one which comes up again, did you know, in this uh, name is not to backbite. Okay. So take care of trusts. An example is to make sure you do not harm others by your tongue through backbiting. Let us look at the Hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu said the believer is one from whose tongue and hand the believers are safe. And the believer is one in whom the people would entrust their blood and wealth. That's the Hadith. Okay. The Prophet, peace upon him, was called al 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 Amin, the trustworthy one. That was his nickname, wasn't it? Because he was the trustworthy one. People put his their imana inside him, uh, put their goods in his hands, and he never ever dealt with business in a bad way. He was called the trustworthy. He never told a lie. Okay. So these are ways that we can also be really, really good. Um which uh, the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him was called Al-Amin, Al and he returned trust safely, um, any imana safely, any borrowed items that you've borrowed, give them back to the person safely, even by keeping secrets, secrets you are entrusting, that are being entrusted to you, keep the secret. Your body's also an imana, look after your body in the right way. Not just physical, but mental health. These are all ways how we can live up that name. Umar radahu anhu, and we're talking about actually the Khalifa here, said, if your brother mentions something to you in private, then walks away. It is an imana, trust, even if he did not instruct you not to inform anybody. Okay? Be thankful for your safety is another one. Reflect on the blessing of security and safety okay let them worship the lord of this house let's look at this. <laughs> let them worship the lord of this sacred house who has fed them against hunger and made them secure against fear okay that's in Surah Quresh. So uh, in there, it actually tells you that you need to thank Allah for each and everything that we've got, food, a house to live in, children, everything. Uh, thank him for our safety. Ask Al-Mumin to bless you with Iman until your last breath and to adorn you with the characteristics of the Muminun, believers, as mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah. And... Uh, in turn, study these features so you can work on adopting them. Okay, so um, all of these things are very, very important um, things that we need to do to live up basically to that name. Okay, so those of you obviously who are not here live, this is where this lecture will get um, uploaded and it will be there for everybody then to have a look at. So now, what we're going to do is to have questions only on um, what you've heard so far on these two attributes. Any comments or questions, anybody, on either Assalam or um, Al Mumin? Both are very important names. You know, you come across the, the, the phrase Al Mu'minina. What does it mean? Yeah, so, so Mu'minina is the believers, basically. Okay. So the ones who believe become believers. And then when you become believers, you are safe, aren't you? Allah protects you and you are safe. Uh, like we mentioned in the prophet stories, all those people who believed and then Allah safeguarded them. This is how it works. Very, very clever. Okay. And they will go to Jannah if they are believers. So it all comes from the one root word. Yes, it does. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. So many, I think it was 16 different derivation of the same uh, roots. 
same three roots. That's the way Arabic language works, which is why it's so unique and you can't change the Quran, basically. Mm. Not even by a single letter. You just can't. Because the sentence won't make sense once you even change even a single letter. It's amazing, really. Okay, anything else? You gave us an example of how to use as -salam in making dua. So can you make, give us an example of how to use al mu'min? Okay, so you can uh, you can say al mumin, oh Allah al mumin, put muminin in me, put your your belief, put put your faith in me. Say you've strayed off reading salah on time, or you're reading one and not the other four. Yes, then when you pray that one salah, you can say al mumin, please put your faith inside me, oh infuser of faith. When you say al mumin that's when he will infuse the faith in you. This is why it's so important to learn the 99 names of Allah, isn't it? He's more likely to listen to you when you say his name. Okay, And say you're anxious and stressed and you can't sleep at night. You've got so much going on in your life. Then you say, oh, as-salam, give me peace, calm me down, I'm stressed. Okay? I've got OCD or I'm anxious, yeah, or I'm ADHD, can't keep still. Give me peace. Oh, as-salam. This is how you use those names in your salah, especially at the end when you are doing your own personal prayer to God in your own language. That's the time to use these names because the rest of the prayer is already there isn't it it's already the verses are already there the ones that you need to use al fatih and things so these names are especially important at the end when you do your own dua your personal dua to allah at the end of your prayers okay that was actually a very good question maria very very good question because that means you're really thinking deeply on how you can use those names so excellent Anything else? I no? just want to say something. It's not a question. When I went to Umrah, yeah. the Sheikh who guided us, um, every time we, we greeted him, he insisted on me saying salam to him, a fresh salam every time we greeted him. Even yeah. if we come on away from him for five minutes and spoke to someone else, he would say salam to you again. Oh. So you were saying, wishing each other salam, peace on you, all day long. Right. And he nice. said it's a nice habit to have. It is a nice habit, isn't it? It's a very good thing to say salam to people, isn't it? And when I say, when I send texts, I always use salam, assalamu alaikum. Yes, that's very nice because that's Islamic and you are bestowing peace on somebody else. Like Allah bestows peace on us. But obviously, we're at a much lower level than Allah is. We must not forget that. So when we say we, how can we implement his names into our lives, no way are we saying that it's at the same level as Allah does to us, but on a far, far diluted lower level. Okay. Kind words. Say somebody, somebody's distraught came across this yesterday somebody had a really big problem and obviously fresh ears helps doesn't it so i gave them some advice and, and i helped them to understand the dilemma they were in more than anything else really they thought oh yeah do you know what i'm at peace now i can rest in peace now. i didn't sleep all night because of this problem so that again we're doing it on a much much diluted level the same way that allah answers our problems when we talk to him after salah we tell him our problems and he bestows peace on us. He helps us to solve our problems, even through the Quran. Somebody's got a problem and we open the Quran and we read it. The answer is there. It's a miracle. How many people have got a problem and they open the Quran and Allah's talking to them about their problem? That's happened to me so many times. It makes me start crying. The answer is there. And it's like Allah's answering your problem in the Quran. And then you feel at peace once you close the Quran, Allah's spoken to you. So counselling works in the same way, doesn't it, as Muslim counselling. When we guide people in the right way, they feel at peace afterwards. We're mimicking that name in a way 
by helping people in whatever context we can. Whatever comes to me, whether good or bad, um, and even in the bad, there's always a good behind it, only that we're not aware of it at the time. Yes. I always say this has come from a lie. It, has, it must be because it didn't happen before then. Yes. Um, One of our um, articles of faith is that everything good and bad is from Allah. Okay, so anything good or bad is always from him and there's always a reason for it. And we already know that bad things can be to test us, to test our patience. There can be a way of relieving sins. It can be a punishment as well to bring us for the good on the right path. And the good things are there as a reward sometimes or allies helping us in some way, you know, or uh, giving us good things for thanking him and gratitude things like that everything good and bad always happens for a reason and it's all always from allah this is uh his decree and this is why islam one of the articles of faith is destiny isn't it we believe everything is from him he knows what is to come he knows what has happened you know what will happen you know what is happening all for a reason it's already written what's going to um, I would just like to add to what uh, Fazila was saying about the um, imam that she always had to say salam alaikum to. Um, my my son-in-law has a habit of um, any time he enters a room, even within his house, and if the door is closed, he'll always knock on the door, even nobody's in that room, and say salam alaikum as he enters because of like the angels and, yes. you know, I don't know. It's the yes. gin as well, but you know, people, those may be in there. Yes, yes, that's a very good point, actually. Uh, we did already mention saying salam to the angels, didn't we? But in our prayers, the right shoulder, left shoulder, and uh, there are other ways. So, yes, um, when did you know when you come into your house, your uh, the sunnah is to say salam alaikum, yeah, yeah, uh, because there are angels in your house and jinns, good jinns as well. In your house. Well, as soon as I put the key in the lock, I say Bismillah. Yes. As I enter, I put my foot in the door. I say Salam alaikum. Or when yes. I leave as well. Yes. So there you go. There is another way of implementing Allah's name, a Salam, isn't it? Into your daily lives. We do it actually quite a lot more than what we think, really. So that's, I think, the one that we probably use more than the others, really. Mm -hmm. Yes, but it's really interesting because learning these now, I'm implementing them more. So every time I do voodoo, I'm thinking of Al Qudus, <laughs> mm. you know, because I'm pure and clean now. I'm mm. thinking about them all, learning them all slowly, which is why these sessions are so good. They really are. And Rahma, I ask for Allah's mercy by saying Rahma now. You know, we're using them now, aren't we? Which is really, really good. These ones, actually, we all know a lot of these, but the ones that are to come next time are going to be ones we might, may not have heard about. Al Qudus, actually, nobody knew about until I covered it. A lot of mm -hmm. sisters messaged me. But... It means pure, isn't it? Yes, pure and clean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, when you start to do these things, someone told me years ago, um, when I was living in Leicester, she said... This is a, a Ustada. She said, when you enter your house, you say salam to the angels and you um, you say um, Surah Ikhlas three times. And she There's said, keep doing things. that. Yeah, that yes. was, and she said, you will see changes in your life. Yes. I mean, Positive there's... changes. Yes. I mean, you know, you don't have to say those things, but any sort of word of Allah, you know, uh, gets rid of the shaitan for start. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know. The Surah class is a thought of the Quran. It is. And Aital Kursi is another very good one for mm. people, isn't it? To keep us safe and secure. One way we can do that to keep us safe and secure is to read Aital mm. Kursi, which praises Allah so much that it gets rid of all the baddies. Isn't it? But also, right. the angels protect your house when you go, when you say that dua as you leave. Yes, and when you sleep at night, if you say, mm -hmm. I look before you sleep, 
you get protection at night mm. all by praising Allah. Mm. It, it just comes automatically as you leave the house. Yes, it's I think like, you're used yeah. to it now, aren't you? But yeah. people are not. So it's good. Keeps the burglars out as well, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> but I've got one little, you, know, you know, you get these little surahs and like a credit card size. Yes. I've yes. got one above the back door and one above the front door. Yes, I've got a dua in my car to keep me safe. Yeah, and I carry one around with me all the time. Yeah. The traveling dua keeps you safe. Yeah. You get safe and secure. And there's two we learned recently. One is the dua which uh, Noah, Prophet Noah, used when he started his ark. And there's one which Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him taught us afterwards. So and the one, um, the one that was the prophet that was in the whale. There's a dua he used. Yes, that's uh, a different one, which we will cover when we do Prophet Jonah. Yeah. Prophet but that's a very well used one. Yes. Surah Hud is the next prophet coming up next yeah. week. Okay, right. I think that's about it. Okay. Um, Jazakallah khair. Sister Sidra, that was a very informative talk as ever. Um, I'm sure that we've learnt a lot and um, yes. can start implementing it as well, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. That's okay. Jazakallah, everybody, for all your tremendous support, which I always get from all the sisters. Mm -hmm. And uh, inshallah, see you next month on the next yes. two names, which I'm not going to tell you because it's a surprise. <laughs> okay. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Okay then, Walaikum Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu Alaikum.